Pop, 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 persuadable. What is going on, boo boos? Got exciting news. Uh, we are gonna come out with a YouTube membership portion. Uh, we'll, we'll get more into the details of that as well as uh, getting some of those mobile game reviews out there while still focusing on Identity 5. Just wanted to update you on that. Here is a dad joke. You ready? I ate a clock yesterday. It was very time consuming. <laughs> I know that's not a knee jerk like, oh, that's the best joke ever, but it's a little punny, right? Oh, look at that. Just punny for funny. Get it? All right. This is one of the most remarkable situations I've ever seen in Identity 5 gameplay. The most sickest, best mercenary block I've ever seen probably in my entire career of Identity 5. But to understand why, I need to explain what's happening here. All right. So we're not really going to go over every little tiny thing that's happening in this match. You guys can see it with your own eyes. There's way too many videos of me doing that. But let me explain to you what has happened to get to the point that we are right now with the game that you are watching and why it's so important. All right, I tried to record this in my car. It's way too fucking hot in there. I mean, we got the sun going, so I'm outside. So if you hear like birds chirping and shit, I promise you it's not Sears owls. It is just nature because it's beautiful. Anyways, let's get into the video. I'm rambling too much, and you know that's my thing to do. So this was China Day 1 qualifiers, and this was ACT versus ZQ, all right? Now, for those who are unfamiliar with tournament rules, if it's not the championship, which is five rounds, all of these are three round competitions. Well, ACT and ZQ actually tied each other in round three. It was 12 to 12. That's why you see in the upper right and left hand corner is one, one and one. So they both won one, they both lost one, they both tied one. But even if that's the case, it goes by a point system, how many points you have. So if, you know, if survivors are winning with three person escapes, even if relatively speaking, the score is similar, one will win based on points. Well, in this case, it was 12 to 12, all right? And ACT's Hunter just eliminated two survivors, all right? That was in the round before. So now the score is 14 to 14. This is round four, and we see ACT as the survivor. So what does that mean, Persuadable? What are we looking for here? Well, for the most part, if the hunter wants to tie again, he needs to eliminate two survivors. That's really how it works. If ACT wants to say, you know what, fuck this, we have gone way too many rounds, we want to win this and end it now, they have to get three survivors out. Then you have the overtime rule. Now, the overtime rules are a little complicated. I'll do the best that I can to explain this. So, pretty much, in the case of survivors escaping, it's pretty much whichever survivors escape the fastest, all right? Now, this is an outdated tournament rule. It's bullshit because it negatively impacts characters that require more time like Dream Witch. So essentially, what wins this is based on which survivors escape the fastest. It's very important to remember. Either way, Hunter is looking for a, a two-person elimination, all right, to at least tie it. Now, that is not the hardest thing to do for these China Hunters. They're absolutely amazing. We've gone against Afu ourselves. Uh, Afu did a very good job at eliminating before you last year. Um, you know, so there's going to be wind in the background. I apologize for that. It's, it's just way too fucking nice outside. I want to be cooped up inside all day. So that's really where we're at. All right. So what happens in this match is absolutely remarkable. I mean, I was losing my shit. To be honest with you, there's a part of me that wants to rip every single match and round and upload it all together with all of the filler eliminated and, you know, labeled as probably the best match that I've seen in Koa 5 so far. But not sure if I'm going to do it because it takes a lot of time. And uh, <laughs> I have this tendency of saying I'm going to do shit and then <laughs> I just don't do it. All right. But what we see Afo doing here is really just trying to slow the game down but we see ACT doing a very good job at spreading around I mean their survivors are doing a remarkable job at slowing this game down and not trying to rush into something too fast to the point where they get caught all right and we see that they're at one cipher remaining really making sure that they're not going to get hit what they're doing is absolutely beautiful they're sequencing the times they need to get on the cipher exact the communication is amazing 
they're explaining to each other which follower is being controlled at which time and they're making sure they're not overextending. So for instance, JMT knows I have time to decode based on when the survivors are saying, okay, follower is on me. But to another degree, everything that I just said is bullshit right there. So do you remember we spoke about the overtime rules? All right. Well, in the overtime, when ACT's Hunter was playing, so that was in the match before this, all right, ZQ survivors got out in approximately, approximately about six minutes and 47 seconds. So how, what does that mean? Well, that now means that if ZQ can tie this match and force the survivors not to decode, or rather force the survivors not to escape faster than six minutes and approximately 47 seconds, ZQ wins. I know that's very, very annoying to understand. All right, let me show the picture of the time when ACT's Hunter was able to eliminate the two of ZQ. There we go. It was about six minutes and 48 seconds. I don't know exactly when the cutoff is. I know what the rules say, but sometimes you get that weird like couple seconds that happens even though the survivors escape. So even though everybody was like, ACT's doing a good job, ACT's doing a good job, and they are. They're doing remarkable. In a weird way, ZQ is doing what's needed. If ZQ can slow this match down, all right, and we already see that they're at the six minute and 28 second match uh, round. As long as ZQ eliminates one person, they win. So everybody's like, oh, the survivors are doing really good because they are. They're doing fucking remarkable. This is a good match. But there's a brilliance behind what the hunter is doing. And Afu knows the rules. This is a long term hunter. This hunter's played for a while. So we are now at the seven minute marker. This now means, well, 6 minutes and 55 seconds, whatever. You know us, man. We all, we always compensate a little bit, you know. Say it's 6 when it's 5, but never mind, whatever. So this is now different. Now, if Afu can get one person down, they win. They win the whole thing. Well, not the finals, but they win this. And now watch the greatest move from Mercenary. If Afu gets this hit on patient, they win. Here we go. You ready? Patient using their skill, doesn't fool him, hits, boom! Fucking mercenary gets the body block for a three-person escape. ACT ends up winning it. Holy shit, let's do it again. We're going to keep this on repeat here because we see that the Dream Witch does have detention. If she gets this hit on patient, it's a tie. This body block literally allowed ACT to win. The, that one body block is the reason why ACT just won. That was the most important body block. They get a three-person escape. Because they get a three-person escape, they win the series. Hands down, the most important body block I have ever seen literally dictated the win for ACT to secure that win against ZQ. Absolutely remarkable. Allows them to outscore them. It is no longer 14 to 14 in this series. And we see ACT eventually secure that win right here. One win or two wins, one draw, one loss. That is what you want to see from a mercenary. Absolutely amazing survivor communication. Super, super proud for them. All right, that's going to conclude the video, boo-boos. Thank you for watching the most important mercenary block of all time right there. What an amazing sequence of events for that China gameplay. Um, you know, I just came back. There's so much footage I'm working on. Thank you so much for being patient. we got a few things lined up in the future. Really excited uh, for our growth. Thank you for being part of my journey, boo-boos. See you soon. Bye-bye now.